So you're thinking about buying or selling in the DC area and you're not sure what to make of the market. Well, today we're gonna to cover where the market has been, where the market is now, and where it's projected to go with our best guesses available to us with the data at hand. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is James Reed and I'm a luxury real estate agent with TTR Sotheby's International Realty, serving DC, Northern Virginia, as well as the Maryland suburbs. Now, I have a buyer clients uh, recently that are looking. We've been able to preview a few places. And uh, thankfully for them, they are in a position to kind of deal with the interest rates where they're at right now in the sixes. And they're very optimistic as we're not having to rush. This time last year, when we were looking at properties for clients, we were having to make the decisions pretty much going into it going into looking at the house, really that was the last step. We were prepping, we were contacting the home inspectors, doing pre-offer inspections, waiving all contingencies, just doing ridiculous things to be competitive. Today, that's not the case in most situations. Today, we can go through, you can even see the house multiple times, you can put an inspection clause in there, you can put other contingencies in your deals right now, which is great for a buyer, now, I'd say that in most cases, uh, there are competition that we are still seeing with houses and properties that are priced right, that are in good to great condition. Those houses are seeing multiple offers. Those houses are, are going above ask. But that is the exception versus the rule. It's no longer the case where you just have four walls and a roof and you can just sell the house above ask and, and demand whatever you want from a buyer. Today, that is not the case by and large in this area. I have investor clients recently that I helped secure a property and they they didn't like the rates. And so they just decided to pay in cash and they're, they're gonna refi later when it makes more sense to them. So there are people in that situation as well. Now that one was a multiple offer situation, but because we went in with cash, the seller wanted certainty. And so cash still wins. Now comparing this year versus last year, this year, we're seeing about one out of every six deals as a cash transaction. And this time last year, we were seeing about one out of every five deals as a cash transaction in the DC area. So cash is still around. It still, it still happens in deals, but not as often. Now, uh, as I said in the beginning, we're gonna talk about where the market was, where it is today, and where it's possibly going. And to do that, we're gonna need to go on my computer, and we're gonna do that right now. We're looking at the local market data through our MLS, which covers a little bit past uh, just the, the DMV area. It goes all the way out to Philly. Um, so we'll look at this quickly, but then we'll get actually to the meat of it, which is uh, our local areas. So you can see that listings and listings are down from last month, last year. Pendings and closed sales are up recently, but um, that's, that's not really a good indicator given where we're at right now. And you can see that listings as a whole are down over the five-year average, which does matter. Days on market, surprisingly, in the region is a little bit less. Um, and then average sold to original list price is 98%. So on average, people are not paying list price currently, but uh, let's see what that means on the, the local level. So uh, <clears throat> now here we go. So as you can see, for recent active listings between DC, Maryland, and Virginia, basically three out of 10 listings did a price reduction in DC, or sorry, yeah, DC and Maryland. And then Virginia, about one out of every four did a reduction in price, which uh, does matter. And when you've got, uh, there we go, I wanted to go to showings. Uh, so you can see that showings are down. Uh, and we use 2019 as, as a benchmark for the last normal year. And then, you know, you can compare it to 2022 all day long if you want, but we know that's a ridiculous year. So you can see that showings are starting to go down. Obviously, the COVID plummet here really amazed as many people made it out into showings April of that year. Uh, good for you. So we've got that for showings. Showings are down, uh, which typically isn't the case for right now because spring market is March through June, typically. Uh, so you're going to see a rise of contracts, rise of listings, rise of showings, but we're not seeing that. Right, we're seeing a kind of a flattening here for purchase contracts. We are seeing closed listings. They're eking up, but they're not, you know, it should be um, up here. 2019 was way up here. Um, everything, everything from a leading indicator there is not great. Uh, we've got compared to yeah, a year ago, pretty much everything that you would look at for a good sign is down. I mean, active daily inventory is up, which has to do a lot with um, bad houses or mispriced houses, people looking for aspirational pricing um, that they had in 2021, 2020. Uh, you're just not gonna get that right now. And let's see here. Yeah, weekly new listings. 
look at that. You can just see it start to drop off. It shouldn't be doing that. Like listings should be going up through March and then staying higher through June and then coming down as that spring market ends. Roughly about two thirds of all of our transactions for the year occur during the spring market um, as indicated here. And you can just see that it's not there right now. There we go. Now pendings to listings ratio. You don't want that going up that because that just means that because there's less listings, right? We've got more transactions occurring. People, there's still buyer demand in the market, but there's less listings going on. Here we go. Now looking at DC specifically, you can see that uh, active listings, um, they're actually a little bit high on there, but they're, you can see that they're sitting, average days on market sitting. It's a bit, a bit more than normal. And then uh, the sold to list ratio is 96%. So people are, and that's a five-year um, five year low. So people are getting, you know, some people are getting really good deals right now in DC. So you've got that. We look at Montgomery County, Maryland. And here you can see people there, it's a little bit more competitive. Right now you're getting better priced properties uh, than you are in DC, but your listings are way down, way down. They're about a third less than they should be on the historical averages. And then you've got Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia, you've got a little bit better, right? But 99%. Uh, list to price ratio. That's pretty good. It's not crazy like it was before. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you were being able to negotiate a, a bit more, but listings are down here. Days on markets are increasing. And it's kind of a tale of um, two levels, especially that I see um, in the luxury market. If it's above $2 million, which you're going to find in McLean, Great Falls, certain areas of Fairfax, Arlington, Alexandria, those houses are sitting a lot longer than they used to. Um, if it's under $2 million, certainly around $1, uh, those houses, if, as long as they are in decent condition, are going fairly quickly right now. Um, especially, We had something where it was in Fairfax in our office where we had 40 groups go through a house, 14 offers um, that went well over ask. So that, that still does occur, but if your house is mispriced or um, in a bad condition, it's going to sit right now with the, the current state of things. And uh, now, so what you're going to ask, well, why are listings so low? Well, currently, most of the mortgages in the United States are pandemic related, so or pandemic era on. So those, those mortgages are from 2020 on, and the majority of those are under 4%. So you have all these people with mortgages under 4%. Why would they sell their house and live in the same region at a 6% mortgage? That wouldn't make any sense. Uh, and I have clients, I mean, I think last year, uh, the last one I got at 3% was in April of last year. And they were kicking themselves because they, if had they moved a little sooner, they could have gotten two and a quarter. But uh, they are thrilled right now to have their 3% mortgage that they're going to keep as long as they possibly can. Um, all right, so now looking uh, again here, data as a whole. All right, you can see showings are down. Uh, it's, you know, 89% of 2019, right? 2019 is our benchmark year. At least it's my benchmark year. When I look at how normal things are, or they could be, and we're kind of in that state of things again, right? So showings are down new listings here, right? 2019 here, 2022, 2023 listings are going down because of, you know, why would you get rid of your low interest rate mortgage? Uh, you've got uh, median days on contract, which is increasing, uh, Inventory is increasing, which is really just you're you're seeing um, a lag in that with bad house or quote unquote bad houses and bad inventory staying on the market longer. Where this time last year and, and in 21 for sure they were not sitting on the market. Even uh, mispriced houses or houses not in great condition were getting picked up. So I, when I see all this information, and if you want this um, sent to you, you can just reach out to me in the description box below. I can send it to you through email every week if you want to nerd out on this and read every little thing um, to your heart's desire. You can certainly get that on a weekly basis from me if that's what you if that's what you want. But this kind of overview here, I do this from time to time, but not every week. And then, um, yeah, just more you know micro markets here or sub markets, right? Alexandria City. All right, you can see the pennings are all down. Falls Church City. Don't look leading this too much here with this seventy one percent, right? Because it was only. It's only 12 transactions there. That's really not enough to uh, to say one way or another how things are going. But all all the major indicators for me are are things are sitting on the market. Um, there's less there there is buyer demand. I see buyer demand, but it's it's on the listing side of things. With why would you be incentivized to sell your property if you're going to get another mortgage in this area? 
And we did talk about before, one out of six transactions right now are cash transactions versus last year, one out of five. So when I talk to clients, I, I talk about, you know, it's a great time to buy uh, because with interest rates going up, it is kind of flattening out pricing, but it's a terrible time to pay for it. So if you can pay for it uh, and afford the mortgage rate, then it's great because maybe, you know, not maybe, one time allows and you, you have a when time allows and you've got an appraisal there, you can refinance to a lower rate. Uh, there's two one buy down programs to where you can effectively get a lower interest rate or pay a lower interest rate or refinance down in the first two years. Uh, that, that's available to you with a lot of, a lot of lenders are offering products like that right now. Um, I had a situation where I personally bought my first property in uh, Alexandria in 2008, in that um, that really interesting time, and I I was very short sighted. I had a six percent uh, mortgage rate. I bought my first property. It was a two one condo in uh, Sherlington, and it was a two twenty five. And I sold it a couple years later, thinking, okay, great, I've, you know, I can roll over and not pay taxes on this now. And today, had I held on to that and rented it out. It's worth 420 today, remodeled, and I, w I would have had a tenant in there by now paying it down for me, and I would have had well over um, a couple hundred thousand dollars in equity. So there is, there is a, you know, you should not be short sighted if you are in the market to buy right now. It should be something that you can afford, that you have a need for, and that it is a long term investment. If you are an investor, investors that I work with, um, you know, it's a different thing. It's more about return immediately for cash flow and they will buy it in cash, um, some of the investors I work with, and then just hold it until it makes sense to refi. Um, so if you're in that situation, there are certainly deals to be had, uh, especially with condos now that uh, there is more of an influx of people moving back. But um, the indicators that I see here are uh, for the market, while interest rates are high, I would see listings being um, slow to come out, and then that will obviously reduce your um, that will reduce the number of transactions that we have going on right now. So while listings are dropping like this, you, you, you can't have more houses to sell. So, um, so if you have any questions about the market as a whole, if you thought I missed something, uh, feel free to put them in the comments sections below. As always, like, subscribe, and tap the bell for notifications so that you can be the first to know about the current market in DC. And uh, thank you for watching.